All right, let's take a look at a fun project using two tools that you can use in Photopea and in Photoshop. It's done differently in each, so this is the Photopea way to create an animated GIF file using the Puppet Warp feature. So there is me. Isn't that a good one? You know you like it. So let's show you how to do that in a program. So first off, Photopea understands if you open a GIF that's animated that it is an animation. So I did a search for dogs, and I'm going to open this GIF that I found, which is a dog at a keyboard. And what you're going to see is that Photopea knows this is an animation, and over here it names the layers underscore A underscore. That stands for animation. And then it actually has a comma and a number. That is um, like out of a thousand, how long that that's going to stay. If a thousand is a second, so it's like milliseconds. So um, 250, and then the other one's 250. You don't necessarily have to put any numbers. I don't put anything with the commas, but that's what that is. So this animation is literally two frames long. It is um, this one and this one. So there and there. I don't know why I can't seem to turn them on right. That's it. So it's just two frames. So when it exports it out, it knows to separate the two frames and then just to play them over and over again. So what this one looks like, if you just want to see it, is this. So it's just two frames, up and down. That's all. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start off and show it to you with a clip art. It works easiest with clip arts, particularly clip arts that have no, um, like, thing that has to stay at the ground because sometimes it flows around a little bit. Uh, so here's a clip art of a bear. I will say I've learned from experience it does not like fuzzy edges. So like if I took a picture of myself and did the proper tools to like have wisps of hair, it goes like insane. You need almost vector crisp edges. So just remember that if you're going to get something that's not on a transparent background. But I downloaded a transparent bear. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this background layer and name it underscore a underscore and then whatever. I'll just call it bear. Makes sense, right? All right, that's all you got to do on the first layer. And then duplicate the layer. So you can right click and duplicate it, or you can drag down to the little new layer button. It, you can leave the word copy on there, like that's fine. It doesn't matter. As long as it starts with underscore A underscore, it will put it in the animation stack. Now, I want to show you the Puppet Warp feature because it's kind of cool. I'm going to turn off the bottom layer. If you go to Edit and Puppet Warp, and this works a little differently between Photoshop and here, but essentially the same thing, it creates a mesh at the top. And you can determine how, like, detailed you want this mesh to be. I'm just putting it on small because it'll be simple. But you could make it where it's more detailed. Um, it usually is set, I think, initially on expand, uh, where it'll expand the mesh. So you can decide whether or not you want to do that or you just leave it. Okay. I'll just set it to zero for now. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put points in. Think like push pins. Uh, didn't we used to have like little paper dolls? Well, you wouldn't know, but people my age would know, like little paper dolls where you put the little push pin in and then you had like an arm and it lifted, like a vacation Bible school or something. Anyways, so I'm going to put in some push pins. So like a push pin in the neck, push pin here in the armpits. Uh, maybe if I only want to move one of the arms, I really only need to deal with that one arm. Okay, so I'm going to put a push pin here so that I can lift this arm up. Watch. Woo, look at that. Oh, we're moving. Like, we're literally making an animation right there. This is Puppet Warp. Isn't that fun? Okay, so notice it moves more than just that arm because it's all connected on the mesh. Just like when you breathe, you know, your whole body moves when you breathe. And so when you move things on a mesh, the whole thing kind of moves a little bit. All right, so I'm going to lift this up a little bit. And, of course, my legs are going to move, but I'm okay with it. So I'm going to hit okay. I could have put pins down here, and then it would they wouldn't move near as much. Okay, so there's my first one. So I got this and this, and that's what they are, okay? Now I can do it again. Maybe I want to have an arm go down, so like it's going to go up and down. So maybe I want it to come back to the middle. So let me duplicate this one again and put it on top. So it's going to be, these two are identical because they're both middle ones. And now I'm going to duplicate this one, and then my top one, we're going to make this arm go down. Okay, so I'll turn these off so you're not confused. Edit, Puppet Warp. Okay, and I'll put one in the neck here, here. I want this to stay still a little bit. And then this one I'm going to drag down. Okay, and of course that moves a little bit too, and that's fine. All right, so now you can kind of look at them one by one. So it starts here, moves up a little bit. It's going to come back, and then that one goes down. I got four, I have four frames. 
Okay, now I just have to export it. So as long as you choose File, Export As, and you go to GIF, so it knows it's an animated GIF, it looks and it finds that you have that underscore A, so it knows. I'm going to zoom out so we can see. And there it is! I got my little bear just moving around, having a good time. Now he's actually really big. It's a thousand pixels. So probably I don't want it to be quite that big. I probably should have resized it in the beginning because I am on photo P and it is kind of lagging right now. Um, but you know, like a little GIF animation for a web page might be like 300 pixels or something. Um, you can also adjust the speed. So if that's going too slow for you, you can speed it up. Whoa, that's too much or slow it down or, you know, go somewhere in the middle. And that's it. You just hit save and then it saves it. There animated. There we go. And now I've got my animated bear. Isn't that fun? Now let's do it with a picture of a person because it's not cut off the background. So I'm going to open up a picture of me um, from my camera roll. Let me get to my camera roll, wherever it is. Okay, and I've learned the hard way that even though I know I want to crop this image right now, don't do it. Because for whatever reason, it gets super confused later on. So wait, I'm going to crop all this extra stuff off later. But for now, what I need to do is select my person. And you have to use a hard brush to do that. You can't use your normal selection tools. I'm going to add a layer mask. And this is the easy way to do this. Add a layer mask and then paint in black on the mask to hide yourself. <laughs> it's just the easiest way to make sure you see it. Again, make sure your brush is completely hard. And then you're just going to go through here and the part that you're going to want to use for this graphic that you're making, that's the part that you want to paint in there. Again, do not crop your image. I wish you could see before I rewound to finish this what happened. It was awful. Okay. Now, once you get yourself selected, Go ahead and invert your selection over there on your layer mask. And then if you want to, you can touch it up. So I'm going to click here, control I. So there's me. Let's say that's, that's good. Now I need to rasterize all of this because you can't have layer masks in animations. Okay. So I have to get rid of this layer mask. Just right click and apply. And it's like glued now to the thing. Okay. Now I think we're good as far as being able to crop, but let's just wait till the very end. Okay. So what you have to do, the first thing you have to do, you have to name your layer, underscore A, underscore, and then whatever. I'm going to call it me, okay? And then copy your layer, and then edit, puppet warp, okay? And then put in your points. I don't want the bottom to float around too much, so I'm going to try to put a few points in at the bottom, and then we'll put one like here at the neck, and then here at the forehead, and that's what I'll grab from, all right? So I'm going to wiggle my head that away. I'm bopping, okay? And then we'll make a copy and we'll bop the other way. So here I go. Copy, edit, puppet warp, put in some points to keep things still. And then we'll bop over here. All right. And then you could, of course, add more, but you get the gist of it. Okay, there they are. There's my layers. I'm going to hit OK. Now let's go ahead and crop this down to so whatever parts you want to keep. So I could crop off some of the shoulder area over there if I don't want it. And then let's take a look at it. File, export as, and then a GIF file. There we go. Good stuff. And then, of course, you could resize it and save it out there. And that's it, folks. That's the simple way to create a GIF animation and to play with Puppet Warp in Photopea. Have fun.